Thank you for your patience and cooperation. The warning will be given in a few moments. Hello YouTube and welcome, Frick here, and I'm going to be doing a Let's Learn video for you guys in Flight Simulator X regarding VORs and VOR navigation. I have been getting some questions and comments regarding VORs and VOR navigation, so I figured I'd go ahead and make this video for you guys. As you can see right here, we have a VOR as depicted in Flight Simulator X. Now, FSX does do a good job at making their in-game VORs look like that of their real-world counterparts. You can see that a VOR does have kind of the basic look and shape of a sombrero or one of those giant hats that you would wear at a Mexican or Spanish siesta when you're eating delicious nachos and burritos and sipping down margaritas. VOR stands for Very High Omnidirectional Range. What this means is that a VOR transmits radio na navigation signals in the Very High Frequency Band or VHF Band. They transmit these signals in 300 degree radial signals in every direction. These signals are called radials. There is one for each degree in a circle around a VOR. Now we are looking at skyvector.com. Skyvector is nothing more than online aeronautical charts. Now as you can see, aeronautical charts contain a vast amount of information. Unfortunately, I am not going to be going into what all this information means on account that this video is going to be predominantly on just VORs and VOR navigation. Zooming in, you will see that the city of Fargo, North Dakota is located right here. Coming in a little further, just south of Fargo, you will see that there is this circle. Around this circle, you will see that there are little notch marks or dashes in it. And at various different locations, there are arrows instead of a dash. At these arrows, you will also see that there are numbers present. This is your first indication that there is a VOR here. Now, inside of those this circle, you will see this little hexagon with a circle or a dot inside of it. That is your real world location of a VOR as it relates to on a map. So you can see that this VOR is located south of the city of Fargo. Now if you were flying in Flight Simulator X and you did want to find a VOR like this one, they are difficult to find. I am extremely zoomed in right now. If I start to zoom out, you will see that these are pretty small structures. Once I get all the way zoomed out, you can see that they are quite difficult to pick out amongst all of the terrain. And right now I am only flying at 3000 feet MSL or about 2100 feet above ground level. And so that is how small they are and how difficult they can be to find. Also you will see that there is this box right here. This is your VOR information. So what you can see is that this VOR is called Fargo VOR. Its frequency to connect to it is 116.2 or its channel is 109. The channels are more so for military use as opposed to civilian flying. Also, you will see this FAR with dot and lines and dots. This is your Morse code identification for this VOR. When you're connecting to a VOR, you can actually listen to the Morse code identifier to ensure that what your VOR indicator is displaying is that of the correct VOR that you are wanting to connect to. Now looking again at that circle around the VOR, you will see all these different hash marks and arrows with the numbers. These are different radials around the VOR. Now if your aircraft was over here, you can see that you are on the 090 radial. That means that you are directly east of that VOR. If your aircraft was south of that VOR, you would be on the 180 radial or the 270 radial if you were west of that VOR. Now one last thing to note about the VOR on this aeronautical chart is that you can see that straight up directly is not where uh, the zero heading is for that VOR. Straight south is not the 180. That is because aircraft usually fly through magnetic compass navigation. Because of this, VORs are aligned to magnetic north as opposed to true north. 
We are now in Flight Simulator X and inside our aircraft, which is the default Cessna 172. In here, there are some tools and instruments that we will use for our VR navigation. The first instruments that we are going to be using are inside the avionics panel, which is right here, and they are the COM devices. We can see that we have a COM1 and also a COM2. In Inside those COM devices, there is also a NAV1 and a NAV2. This is where we enter our frequencies for connecting to a particular VOR. So in NAV1, we see that we have the frequency in our active frequency, which is the one on the left and not the standby one, which is the one on the right, but our active frequency is 116.2. We learned earlier that 116.2 connects you to the Fargo VOR. The information then for the NAV1 frequency VOR information is in the VOR1 indicator, which is shown in your instrument panel right here. You will see that we also have a VOR2 indicator right here. This shows the VOR information respectively for your NAV2 VOR frequency that you have input. Also, you will see down here there is a device called the DME, or Distance Measuring Equipment. This shows the distance and your relative speed in reference to a VOR that is selected. So right now it is on R1 or NAV1. If it was on R2, it would be NAV2. But since we are on R1, which is the Fargo VOR, we can see that we are exactly 14 nautical miles away from that VOR. We now know what equipment we use for our VOR navigation, and we also know how to tell our distance from a VOR. However, we don't know how to find what relative direction we are from that VOR. That is where we use our VOR indicator. Right here, we see that we have the Omni Bearing Selector knob and the VOR1 indicator, and it's also got this vertical line right here, which is offset slightly to the right. This is how we find out where we are in relation to a particular VOR. Down here you will see this triangle and you can see that it is pointing down. This is your to or from flag. Since the triangle is pointing down, it is indicating a from flag. So what we want to do now is try to get this line vertical. So what I'm going to do is go to the OBS and start turning it clockwise and I can see that that line is starting to become vertical. Once it is vertical and we are on the from flag, we are now able to find our bearing from the particular VOR that we are connected to. So we are connected to the Fargo VOR, uh, which is 116.2. We are 14 nautical miles away from it. And since we have the from flag, we are at a bearing from that VOR of 070. Now we know our distance from the VOR, which is 14 nautical miles. We know our bearing from that VOR, which is 070 degrees. And one last thing to look at is our current heading. So right now, our aircraft is roughly on a heading of 210. Moving back to Sky Vector and our aeronautical chart, we can now play a game of where on this map is our aircraft. So what we can do is we can look at the Fargo VOR right here. We now know that all of these little dashes indicate a bearing from the VOR. So we are on the radial of 070. So we see right here is the radial of 060 and 090. So we know that 070 is right here. So if we go from the VOR, follow this imaginary line through right here, that is the 070 bearing. So we know that we are somewhere along that line. We know our distance is 14 nautical miles, but we have no reference to know if 14 nautical miles is here or way out here. So what we do for that is we go to the legend of our aeronautical chart. On the bottom, we will see the distance legend. So we can see that a nautical mile is right here, or the distance for nautical miles is right here, or statute miles, or kilometers. Well, since our DME, or distance measuring equipment, uses nautical miles, we'll use that. We can see that roughly 10 nautical miles is about an inch on our screen. So what we can do is go back up to Fargo and find our Fargo VOR, which is right here. We're on this bearing of 070, and we are roughly 14 nautical miles away. So if we go out about an inch, which is roughly about here, we know that that is 10 nautical miles. So if we go out about half that right here and in slightly, 
This is about 14 nautical miles. So along this radial of 070, at about 14 nautical miles, which is about where my mouse cursor is, is where our aircraft is. So now we know where our aircraft is on that map. To confirm this, what we can do is we can use our heading and visually look out the window. So we know that our aircraft was on a heading of roughly 210. Well, using our VOR again, we can see that 180 is pretty much straight south, 270 is pretty much straight west, and right here is 240 and 210 would be about here. So if we go back to our aircraft, which is about right here, it is facing roughly in a direction facing kind of southwest. So knowing that our aircraft is facing roughly southwest and we are at about this location, kind of where this C is, we'll say, we're in about that location and we're facing southwest, we would know that our wings would come this way. So if we were to look out our windows, we would know that roughly if we're looking towards our right wing, we would be looking in the direction of Fargo. We know that we are heading this way. So our nose is pointing about down here. So if we were to look between our wings, and between our nose, we would know that that is about the direction of the VOR. So we can use that information to then visually check to confirm our location is roughly right here. So we are back in the aircraft and we know that we are 14 nautical miles away from that VOR at a bearing of 060. And we know that off our right wing should be Fargo. So we will go look out the window and we will start to turn our camera to the right and we can see that our right wing is faced out here and roughly off that wing is the city of Fargo. We then also know that our VOR was roughly between the right wing and the nose of our aircraft. So out in this location just south of Fargo is where that VOR should be. Going back into Sky Vector, all of this is confirmed that that VOR is south of Fargo. So we have confirmed both visually and on our map using VOR navigation, the location of our aircraft. Now we are back in our aircraft and using the from flag, we were able to find out our aircraft position, both visually looking out the windows and on our aeronautical chart using both our distance in the DME and the information provided on our VO1 indicator. Now just say we want to fly to our VO1, our, our VOR. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch this flag from a from flag to a to flag. So we're going to turn the OBS until that flag tra changes, and now we can see that it's pointing up, so it is turned into a to flag. While it's at a to flag, what we're going to do is we are going to try to turn our VOR indicator, or OBS, to get our line not deflected anywhere, but straight up and down vertical. So we roughly have it right now. So I'm going to go look at it, and we can see that in order to fly to our VOR that we have selected, we need to roughly fly at a 250 heading. This should take us directly to that VOR. What I am going to do now is I am going to unpause the simulation, and we are going to start flying, and we are going to turn towards that 250 heading. So I have my aircraft turning. I already have my heading bug roughly at a 250 heading. And it's at a 252. So what I am going to do is I'm going to let autopilot start flying us. So I'm going to turn on my heading hold switch. And it is going to level us out at a 250 heading. Now, one thing I do have going on is I put wind from the north at 16 knots. So what you can see now is our we are flying at a 25 heading, which is where we need to go to get to that VOR. However, if I were to speed up the simulation, or even without speeding up the simulation, you can see that our needle is starting to deflect to the right. This is because we have a north wind. So we are flying relatively west, but we have a north wind at 16 knots that is pushing us south of our desired path. So I'm going to pause the simulation, go back into Sky Vector. So we are right here, we're flying at a 240 heading, 
which is roughly this direction, our aircraft is here and we're flying towards the VOR like this. But since we have a wind coming from the north, it is pushing our aircraft south of that line. So even though we are heading 240, we might actually be along a line that is a little more severe like this, that is actually going to miss the VOR. That is because of the wind. So what we can do is go back into our aircraft and we need to change our heading a little more severe. So what you can see now is I have a heading of 260 even though I need to be flying at 250 to get to that VOR. Now if we fly a little bit at 260 we will watch this VOR needle to see what happens and I am going to speed up the simulation just so we can see the changes a little more. So I'm at 260 and we can see that nothing is changing really right here. If I were to change my heading a little more to say a 270, you will see that that needle is starting to deflect center. So what I have done is overcompensated my heading for the wind. So what I'm going to do is turn between 250 which was causing it to deflect to the right and 270 which was causing it to deflect to the left and keep it at a heading of 260. And now we can see that it is staying relatively straight. So I'm going to go ahead and put the simulation back to normal and pause the simulation. So what was happening there is we needed to fly at a heading of 250 to intercept the VOR. But flying at 250 with the wind, we were flying are getting pushed south of that heading that we needed to stay on. So we overcompensated and went to 270, which is a direct west heading, and that started deflecting the needle to the left. However, when we compensated in the middle to 260, which is about right here, our heading VOR indicator is now staying vertical. So what we have done is we have successfully adjusted our aircraft heading to keep the heading on our VOR correct. So what we actually want to be doing is flying a true heading of 250 even though our aircraft is indicating a heading of 260. This compensation for VOR navigation is called bracketing where you are compensating for the wind to maintain a true heading that you want to utilize. So we wanted to utilize that true heading of 250 and we're actually flying 260 but it is sending our aircraft on that true heading of 250. So we have successfully used bracketing to compensate for the wind. Now looking at our instruments we'll see that we are now closer to our VOR. We're 8.5 nautical miles away and we have to fly a heading to that VOR of 250. We have successfully used bracketing to compensate for the wind and we're flying an aircraft heading of 260 for a true heading of 250 to intercept that VOR. Now that is great if every place we want to fly to has a VOR, but what if we want to fly to a location that does not have a VOR? Well we know that we are flying along this path right here. Now just say we want to go to Castleton which is right here that location does not have a VOR right there. So how are we going to find that? Well, what we can do is still use VOR navigation to get on a heading from that VOR to that location. So we knew earlier that about an inch was 10 nautical miles. So we can see that Castleton is roughly 20 nautical miles away from this VOR. We are coming in a direction down here. What we want to do is we want to intercept the radial that will take us to Castleton from that VOR. We can see that the radial to Castleton from that VOR is roughly about a 290 heading. So what we want to do is we want to get on a 290 heading from that VOR. But we are up here. So there's two ways that you could do that. What we could do is we could fly to the VOR and then from the VOR fly at a 290 heading and that will take us to Castleton or we can immediately put in a 270 uh, heading on the VOR indicator which would show a left deflection of that vertical line so we would have to fly south till we intercept that line and then fly to that location. 
How I am going to show you to fly to Castleton is going to be flying to that VOR and then you flying from that radial of 290 to get to Castleton. So we're going to go to our aircraft and we are currently flying towards that VOR. I'm going to unpause the simulation and I am going to look out the window and I'm actually going to speed the simulation up for this so we're not along for the entire flight. So I'm going to put it at about a four times speed. Right now, Another thing to note is as we get closer to a VOR, the deviations are going to get greater. That is because if we look at our sky vector, a 060 is here, 061 right here is just real close. But out here it is actually a little farther away. So if we were way out here and we went from this location to this location, or this location to this location, excuse me, so it's roughly at this anchor down to about here, that's only about a two degree radial difference. However, when we're in tighter, if we go about that same distance, you can see that we're skipping almost 30 radials. So that is why the deflections are greater. Now we're going back into our aircraft, we're 2.1 nautical miles away, and we can see how far deflected our indicator is. So we need to fly roughly at a 210. I'm going to put the simulation rate back to normal. Going to deflect this. It's going to be straight to the west pretty much now. A little further. All right. going to pause the simulation right here. So you could see how much it was deflecting because we're only 0.9 nautical miles away from that VOR. So it is going to deflect a lot more. So we are basically right over that VOR. And we are still heading at a heading of 270. So what has happened if we come to our chart is we originally were up here. We were heading at two, uh, 240 or 250 to intercept that VOR. So from here, straight down here like this. Now that we're at that VOR, we need to turn and go onto that heading of 290 or 280 to go to Castleton. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our aircraft, I'm gonna unpause it, and I am gonna start turning ourselves to about a heading of 290. We're at 291. However, we know that there was that wind that was about 18 knots out of the north. So again, we are gonna have to use bracketing to fly. Now another thing to make sure that we're on that heading is we are gonna go from the two, or from, we, we switched from the, the two flag right here and we're gonna switch to the from flag. So I'm gonna switch that around. Well, it is at the from flag. Excuse me. And we need to fly at roughly 290, which is about right here. As you can see, we are flying slightly to the left of that, and we're deviating. That's, again, because of that wind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the aircraft at roughly a 298. I'm going to go to 300 heading for the aircraft and see if we can't get this to deflect more to the left to where it is straight vertical because we want to intercept that line and have it be vertical. So right now that is the 290 bearing which is what we need to do to get to Castleton because remember from our VOR we need to fly at a 290. Going back into the aircraft we're starting to intercept that so we're overcompensating slightly for the wind. That is all right because we want to get onto that line so we make sure that we are on the proper radial to get to Castleton. We're almost completely vertical. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to turn the aircraft again, not between 290, but not all the way to 300 where we were overcorrecting. I'm going to have it at about a 295. And at this bearing, we will see that we have roughly compensated for the wind where our vertical line is not deflecting anymore. So we have successfully bracketed our aircraft to be on a bearing from that VOR of 290. Now we're only five nautical miles away and what I'm going to do is again speed up the simulation 
to about four speed. I'm actually gonna go a little faster than that to about eight speed. And you can see that it's not deflecting. So we have successfully bracketed our aircraft to the wind. We're gonna continue on this and I am gonna pause the simulation right here. Now we can see an airport coming up. We can see that we're about 10 nautical miles out and about another 10 nautical miles is another airport. And you can't really see it, but there is another city out here. And what we have done is we have got ourselves to Castleton. So we'll go back to Sky Vector and we can see that south of Castleton is an airport. Well, we were flying out of this VOR at the proper radial of 290 so we are about 10 miles out which is about right here because remember an inch is about 10 nautical miles and we have about another 10 miles or 8 miles to get to that airport so what we have done is we have successfully flown from where we were to that VOR and then intercepted the radial that will take us to Castleton and flown on that radial to where we are now about right here and have the Castleton Airport in sight right there. So that is how you can fly to a airport or a location that is not directly on a VOR. So from all of this information, we have learned how to determine our position from a VOR, how to fly our aircraft to a VOR, and also how to fly our aircraft to a location away from a VOR that is not directly on a VOR. We have also learned how to use bracketing to compensate our aircraft heading for the wind to have a true heading of where we want to go. Now, what if we want to fly to multiple VORs? That is another thing we can use sky vector or aeronautical charts for. So here we see that we have the Fargo VOR right here. Now just say we want to fly down here to the Alexandria VOR and then from the Alexandria VOR to this Darwin VOR and then finally from there we want to fly to this Minneapolis Flying Cloud VOR. Well I am going to show you how to do that. We know how to fly from, from a VOR to a VOR so we can use that information. So just say we take off from Fargo Hector International Airport right here. We fly south and intercept this VOR. So our aircraft is right on top of this VOR. Now we wanted to go to that Alexandria VOR. Well, if you look, coming out of the VOR are all these blue lines. What these are are actually basically highways in the sky that will take you from one VOR to another. So we can see that from this Fargo VOR along this blue line, it takes us directly to that Alexandria VOR. And on top of that, you can see that there are numbers here. We have that 116 degrees, and down here we have that 299 degrees. What that's showing us is that if we fly from Fargo VOR right here on a heading of 116 degrees, or along that 116 degree radial, we will eventually get to the Alexandria VOR. So what we can do is if we don't have Alexandria's VOR connected yet because it is too far away and we're at Fargo, we'll just fly on that radial of 116 degrees to eventually where we connect to the Alexandria VOR. Then we can switch our flag from the from flag to the to flag to fly to that Alexandria VOR. Once we get to that VOR, what we can do is do the exact same thing. We'll fly at a heading of 141 degrees until eventually we connect to the Darwin VOR. So we would be using a from flag at 141 degrees, and eventually once we connected, say somewhere down here, we would turn, turn that flag to a two flag and fly to the Darwin VOR. Now we need to get to the Flying Cloud VOR. If we were unable to connect directly to that flying cloud VOR, we would do the same thing, even though there's not a blue line here, but the same way we found Castleton Airport. We would go from the Darwin VOR, which is right here, and we can see that we have to fly at roughly a 100 heading. So 109 takes us too far south, 190 takes us too far north, so roughly a 100 degree heading, which would intercept that flying cloud VOR. 
So that is how you can use VOR navigation in Flight Simulator X and use real world tools such as these aeronautical charts to do your flight planning. So I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope this information was beneficial. If you do have any questions on how to do VOR navigation or have further questions regarding VORs, please feel free to comment or message me uh, and I'd be happy to answer them in any way that I can. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.